It's time to fire this thing up. Hit it. What I have here is part of the original inner liner that was on this 20-foot aqua sport project boat. And what we're going to be doing today here at Ship Shape TV is we're going to be showing you how to tie this piece back into the craft doing a structural fiberglass repair. Well, good deal you made it. Hi, I'm John Graviscus. It's great to have you back in the boat shop. The last time that we were on this project boat, we showed you how to recore a deck and how to glass it in. Well, what we have to get ready is pretty much the entire inside of this boat for some type of a finish. We've yet to foam in the floor. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to cut some holes into our deck and we're gonna have to put in some pour foam, some flotation foam. Now we're not only working on this boat, but we're also gonna be on a 21 foot Chris Craft. This particular one's called a Seahawk. And you might have teak components like companion ways or door jams or teak trim. And we're gonna show you how you can convert these teak pieces over to something much cleaner, much simpler to maintain. It's called King Starboard. Then we're gonna be back on the boat lift that we installed at my house from Deco Boat Lift. And I have an aluminum walkway that I use to get on and off the boat. And we're gonna show you how to add some traction, some non-skid to an aluminum walkway. Now today's program is gonna be jam-packed full of tips and information. And speaking of that, our first one has to deal with a new 24-foot sea hunt. And guys, this is one awesome Bay boat is completely different from whatever they've made before. And if we could, let's go ahead and unveil it to the world. Here we are today on Sea Hunt's new RZR24. Who we have on the program is Randy Worth, and Randy is in the sales and marketing department for Sea Hunt Boats. And I've been doing my research on the company. Apparently it started in 1995, and you're now claiming to be the number one selling saltwater boat in the industry between 18 and 30 feet, something like that. Okay, how in the world did you do that? You've only been around since 1995. Well, we're not claiming. We actually are the number one selling saltwater boat, 18 to 30 foot in the industry. Let's talk about the owner of Sea Hunt. They're a family business. And even though this is an awesome fishing boat, you might want to take this to Key Biscayne and go out after permit or redfish or trout, whatever. I could see guys cruising the beach, but the owner also integrates into every sea hunt, the family. How is this set up for the wife, for the kids? Well, we are the first bay boat to introduce a coffin box for the wife, for the kids to sit on. We also have always incorporated the jump seats in the rear of this boat. So while you're running around, your wife can actually still sit on the front. Your kids can sit in the back jump seats and they're down below the gunnel, safety first. Okay, what else comes standard with this boat? And guys, when you're looking at a new boat, you have to understand between a manufacturer, when they say that's base boat, and an option. I'm talking about what's included into Sea Hunt as a base boat on the RZR24, because this is not typical. Standard 250 Yamaha SHO, standard hydraulic six inch Sea Star jack plate. We are the first bay boat in the industry to offer standard Optimus EPS electronic power steering on a bay boat. Guys, that's like a $5,000 option they're offering at standard to where everybody else it would be kind of an option and an upgrade. Got another question for you. How is this craft set up for like rod storage? Um, well, another first for a boat company, we have offered this standard V-lock removable rod storage up front. Um, we also have rod storage, lockable rod storage up front. Then you have rod holders on the side, which with this has the optional T-top. You can, okay, you can with, put long, with the hard top, this yes. is very nice. You can put your, you know, your eight-foot poles on the side and don't have to worry about them hitting anything. Okay. 
I know a lot of people are looking at a 24 mm -hmm. in my audience. How can they get more information on the RZR? They can actually look us up on SeaHuntBoats.com. They can look at us on Facebook, Instagram, or if they're really interested and want to get to it quicker, contact a local dealer. Set something up. Thanks, Randy. We'll be back right after this. Shipshape TV, the global leader in boat improvement, is being brought to you in part by Sunbrella Marine Beautiful Fabrics. For above and below deck, Sunbrella, we live to be on the water. By Boat Outfitters, your source for replacement hardware, custom King starboard doors, tackle centers, and more. Need it? They'll build it. Visit BoatOutfitters.com to update or customize your boat today. And finally, made possible by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Welcome back. This is American Custom Yachts, a real working 28 acre boat yard slash boat building facility residing in Stewart, Florida. It's Shipshape TV's home base. Ideally located, the complex is situated on the shores of the Okeechobee Waterway, which happens to connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Now once again, here's the founder and host of Shipshape TV, John Grabiscus. Thanks, Buck. The first project that we want to get into today is we would like to grasp this piece of the inner liner into our 20-foot aqua sport. And welcome back, who we have on the program is my brother-in-law, Bert Bell. And Bert, you and I argue about this a lot, mm -hmm. of how to do a structural fiberglass repair. And nobody is claiming to be right. There are different schools of thought when it comes to, to doing a structural fiberglass job true and i want everybody to kind of come around on my side and take a look at what we have here okay here's the inner liner and i'm just going to point out a couple of components we have on the side wall here this looks to be about a quarter inch thick of fiberglass yep then we have some half inch plywood up top the glass is about a half inch thick and that again is half inch plywood now if i flip this over you guys see that we have the original plywood I don't want to go through the aggravation of getting rid of all that wood, scabbing in some new wood and everything else. Here's my idea. Let's just put a couple of just temporary forms. I know they're going to be in it forever, okay? But let's take some half inch plywood and we could kind of just have it jut out a little bit from the inner liner as well as underneath the top cap, okay, right here. Just a little bit so that we have something for this piece to set on. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of areas that we have to deal with to get it to set in flush, Bert. You put in the 1708 when you put in the floor. We've got to trim this a little bit. Okay, also I'm thinking this 4-inch PVC rigging pipe that we use to support the aft section of the deck. Little of that's going to have to get trimmed too. All right. Now when you're doing a structural fiberglass repair, what I like to try to achieve is what's called a 12 to 1 rule so just hypothetically okay this is a quarter inch mm -hmm. i want you to go from nothing the edge of the fiberglass and grind back on both sides of this repair 12 times the thickness of the fiberglass mm -hmm. so if it's a quarter inch let's try if we can to grind back about three inches on this side three inches on the part okay okay it's a half inch thick up on top we're looking for a structural repair. Well, 12 to 1, that's 6 inches. I don't have 6 inches here. But I do. I can get it here, and I can get it on this side of the part. Right. And I have a little visual demonstration. I want everybody to take a look at this. Okay, this is just some wood that I cut a V into. And Bert, I'm just going to set this here. You are a big advocate of taking your structural fiberglass. This is 1708. All right. And you like to start with the small part first and put it in. And then you like to come with a little larger piece over top of it. Mm -hmm. And then your finished piece for your structural glass over top of that. Right. Okay? And that's fine. I like the other school of thought. I think if we put down the big, widest piece first, and let me kind of get it in there, all right? I'm thinking when we grind this thing flat, which eventually we'll, you know, we're going to be putting right. that over top of everything. I think we're going to get more bite this way with the first piece. We can come back in with the second piece, fill it in a little bit. That's filling up our hole. 
And then if we need a third or a fourth or whatever, we can go ahead and we can fill that in. Now I think we've got a bridge all the way across. I think it's stronger. Could we do it this Absolutely. way? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We're going to have to literally tape it all the way around the side, all the way around this piece. I'm going to need you to graft it into the transom. And I also want you to take some fiberglass from the deck. Remember, it's coming onto a four inch PVC pipe. I would like to see you kind of glass this, leave a little splash well back here to collect water. Kind of mold something nice mm -hmm. in there as, as a little rain well or whatever. We also have to get the whole inside of this boat ready for a new type of finish. I haven't shown this before, okay, but I think this is gonna be cool. I need it somewhat flat. You, okay. you use 1708 to tape it in. You also put some fiberglass chop strand mat over top of it. What can we do is a fairing compound, not only for the deck, but also back here on this transom. This looks like it's just 1708. We, we've got to make it a little smoother. Okay. Um, fiberglass coatings is sending me some fairing compound. It's polyester based, so it'll bite right into this. Stay the course. Ship JTV and its host, John Graviscus, will be back in a flash. What you're looking at, guys, is the original Peak doorway. It's a trifold door, as well as the lid that came off of a 1988 21-foot Seahawk. It's actually an old Chris Craft. And welcome back. We're now in Ocoee, Florida, and who we have on the program is Andrew Brown. And Andrew heads up BoatOutfitters.com. And these guys build a lot of replacement pieces for the boat. And this trifold door is no exception. I had the guys remove it from mm -hmm. the craft. They drove it here in a pickup truck. You took the pieces. How did you transform this into this? Because that is gorgeous, my friend. Well, we, uh, we, we took the parts. We were able to put it up on our digitizing table. We had engineers trace around the entire outside shape of the, the uh, door and the hatch. Uh, they're able to make 3D models at that point from it and uh, able then to cut on our CNC routers and uh, make finished King Starboard replacement parts. You know, a lot of boaters have experienced with louvered doors at night if they're sleeping in the cabin, mosquitoes can still get in right. there. What did you do to enhance this actual part on a on a boat, right? Well, we, we we you know we wanted to replace the door, but we also wanted to improve upon it. So what we did is we actually milled and were able to integrate uh, screens behind the louvers to eliminate mosquitoes being able to get down into the cabin. Okay. Now this also was original on that Chris Craft, and you can see that this is starboard, but it rattles when you're running. It's also got kind of junky hardware on it, and there's a lot of rust on it. You really can't mill. King Starboard or sand it no. efficiently. It's right. going to kind of mess up the finish. It's probably best to get a replacement. Mm -hmm. But how did you make this better? Well, the great thing about, about this door, compared to a more uh, complicated cabin entry door like we're showing here, is that it's so easy to pull off, measure your hole cut out, and order exact, an exact replacement. And in this case, what we were able to do is mill into the returns and integrate a bulb seal. And this is not an adhesive seal that's gonna pull off. It's actually cut with a T-slot and pressed into place. And what it does is, to your point, it eliminates any rattle of the door against the returns. So when you're running, your door is completely quiet. It also does cut down on water intrusion. It makes it more water resistant. So this is a real nice replacement part for uh, Okay, for that so door. you can just take a measurement, go to the website, and order it. That's simple. Something more intricate, they're gonna have to get it to you so that you they can would. actually make a replica. Absolutely. Okay, let's go down here. You might have a little bit extra space uh, in an inner liner or in a bulkhead or something like that. That's what this is an example of. This piece came off from an anchor locker. The guy had a little bit more room. He used it, you made it deeper. Yep. Again, out of the King Starboard. Okay, take a look at these doors right here, guys. You might have one of these in your center console, and they make starboard version, also acrylic versions, but your door might be in great shape. Mm -hmm. You might just need to replace a pitted frame. They actually sell that. We do. What's this door all about? This is a sliding cabin entry door. We do a lot of bending of acrylic. We've made a lot of the acrylic doors that are on many of the boats that are out there. And if they need replacing, we have those available as well. Fantastic. Could you give us a little practical advice to keep things a little bit more uh, uh, watertight? I know, I know King Starboard needs to be mechanically fastened. Yeah. It certainly does need to be mechanically fastened. We, we pre-drill all these holes. 
but it is a, a good practice to go ahead and run a bead of silicone around the outside of the frame before you set it into place and mechanically fasten it so that you eliminate any water from running down behind the seam from where the frame sets against the fiberglass. It is a lot less expensive to buy replacement parts and make your boat beautiful again, especially if, you know, the average age of a boat today is like 18 years old, rather than buying a brand new crab. Right. Okay, that's very, very expensive. And a lot of people need this resource at Boat Outfitters. How do they get you and get information on these replacement parts? They can visit us at uh, BoatOutfitters.com. Uh, but John, don't forget, sometimes your hardware needs to be replaced even before your door does. We have all the replacement locks, latches, hinges. We even sell the replacement seal, gas shocks, all available at BoatOutfitters.com. Welcome back. You're dialed in to Shipshape TV, boat improvement that's easy to comprehend. What I have here in my hands is the remote control device for my new 16,000 pound deco boat lift. And I use this whenever I'm in the craft to raise it out of the water. And you'll notice that I had deco manufacture an aluminum walkway right along the side of the boat lift. This way I can do some maintenance. And as it's coming out of the water, I mean, it's wet. And who we have on the program is Jason Gardner from Sea Deck. And Jason, I was thinking about all the times that you've been on the show, and you've shown how with your special foam, non-skid pads, how you can really get some traction. And apparently the wetter it gets, the more traction you get. Absolutely. And I'm thinking this is a perfect scenario to add some Sea Deck to. It's a perfect application. Can, can you put Sea Deck on to raw aluminum? We adhere really well to aluminum. We have an acrylic-based 3M PSA. It's a pressure-sensitive adhesive. Uh, we work with rigid bottom inflatable boats. They've had you know, aluminum decks. It's bulletproof. I know that Sea Deck comes in a whole lot of different colors. I, I told you what I was trying to do. You came up with some different stuff here. H how do you make these pads? Let let's start off at the factory. How do you actually make a Sea Deck pad? So we start with uh, EVA foam, ethylene vinyl acetate. It's a closed cell durable, comfortable foam. Okay. Um, we laminate two colors, in this case a brown over a black foam. Right. We add a brush texture for a really good non-skid and nice looking feel. And finally we take uh, our CNC machines and we actually route a border. We can cut graphics and logos right into the pads. Okay, that's your logo right there. That's sure. the seed deck. Let's show the second example. Okay, there's no logo there. It's just the brown. It has mm -hmm. the black border. And, oh man, Deco Boat Lifts is going to lose their mind when they see that. That turned out really well. That is really, really yeah. cool. Okay, so, so that's a brown color, and that kind of matches my Weatherwood mm -hmm. real nice. But let's show everybody the gray. This is the same thing. You, this is gray over what? This is a storm gray over a cool gray. Okay. Some nice neutral colors. It'll go with just about anything, I think. Um, this is a beach sand, a light beach sand over a storm gray. Right. And finally, one of our most popular color combinations is a storm gray over a black. It's really nice contrast with the logos and the border. How about if we unbolt that walkway from the boat lift, let's put it out on the driveway, and I want to use a special aluminum brightener on it to get the finish nice again. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go ahead and put on that shark hide metal protectant. And it's on the underside. And guys, I'm telling you, every time you bring the boat out of the salt water, you should try to rinse every component and that's hard, man. I'm laying on the dock. I'm trying to spray the water up underneath. This is really going to help yeah. with the shark hide. But let's show everybody the walkway in place with the faux teak look. Here it is. It's gorgeous. Here it is with the storm gray over the light gray. Here's the walkway with the beach sand look. Gorgeous. Here it is with the dark storm gray over black. It's really nice. There are a lot of boat lift companies out there, not, not only Deco, that offer these walkways. You might want to think about this. For those people at home, I know you help all the boaters with swim platforms and everything else with SeaDeck, yep. but for those people at home, how would they get pads for their aluminum walkways for their boat lifts from SeaDeck? It, it's simple. Go to the website, seadek.com, seadek.com. All of our contact information is there. We have great customer service people that'll take your measurements, choose your color combination. Uh, if you want to add a graphic, it's a little extra, but we can work with you on the artwork and we can make something really nice and unique and really functional and comfortable. Welcome back. You're watching Shipshape TV, boat improvement made easy. Well, this is the color combination that I finally landed on from Sea Deck and welcome back. 
who we now have on the program is one of the owners of Deco Boat Lifts. They are the maker of my boat lift and this aluminum walkway. And George, here is your non-skid right into the plank, and that's great. You haven't seen this before, but what do you think of Sea Deck on your aluminum walkways as maybe an idea for customers to consider? I would absolutely consider the Sea Deck product. It looks good. It's got a great soft feel to the underneath of your feet. It's cooler than the deck itself. And you, you can, can cut look, logos, man. You cut logos in it. You can put your boat name. You can put Deco boat lifts on it. Uh, now, there's now lots you of... saw the condition of the original aluminum. Okay, it was a little yeah. bit rough. Okay, it's only been in salt water for two months. Right. We took it out. You brought over an aluminum brightener, and I did this out in the front driveway. I cleaned it up and I swiped on a coat of shark hide. How does it look now? So oh, it came out very nice and the shark hide gives it a nice sheen. The uh, sea deck looks fabulous. I think we're in a, going in the right direction. Now a lot of people are moving to Florida and they're going to need a boat lift, okay? I have a 32 foot CV that's getting built. You guys saw that recently getting popped from the mold. That's going to be going on this boat lift, but we're going to have to change the bunks, right? It's a step tall. It's different than what I have. Yeah. Yeah. Could you come back on the program and show us how to do that? We will. We'll, we'll take the uh, full length uh, aluminum bunks off and we'll put individual pedestal chocks on and it'll, it'll hold the, the hull and miss the step. A lot of guys have questions on boat lifts. How do they get Deco? DecoBoatLift.com well, We need to thank you, my friend. We also need to thank Jason Gardner from Sea Deck for helping us out. Clint Bland from Shark Hide, our friends from Fiberglass Coatings. They set us up with all the fairing compounds on that Aquasport. And man, take a look at the transformation on Mike Strickland's Chris Craft, that Seahawk, from the peak component to what Andrew Brown and the team at Boat Outfitters did and the conversion with King Starboard Parks. Does that look amazing? Of course it does. And guys, you could do this on your boats, but we're all out of time. I'm John Braviscus, again, my really good friend, George Massal from Deco Boat Lifts. Until we see each other again, get out there, start making your stuff ship shape, okay? Hey, George, grab that end. I want to grab that. We got to bolt this in and we're done, man. The day's over. Closed captioning for Ship Shape TV has been made possible by Marine 31 Boat Waxes, Cleaners, and Polishes. At Marine 31, quality and value stand above all else. Professional results are only a few simple steps away. Marine 31, for the captain that demands the best for their boats.